Hello you plonkers and welcome back to another video on the Druzy channel. A very different video to what I've done before. Today I'm going to be looking at the reign of Nathan Buckley to determine if it was a success or a failure. And I'm not just going to come on to my channel and pretend that I know Collingwood because I don't. So what I've done is I've called up the big man, Mitchie Ryan. He's in the building. What's up Mitchie? I'm um, very good Druze. It's a pleasure to be on the channel. I think it could be the second appearance but... Yeah, what a big topic on Nathan Buckley and uh, him stepping down as a Collingwood coach, and I'm looking forward to uh, have a chat about it. Let's just get into it, Mitchie. Here we go. All right, let's go. So let's start at the start, Mitchie. Buckley takes over as Collingwood coach in 2012 after taking the reins off Mick Malthouse. So Mick Malthouse, absolute champion of the sport, wins a flag in 2010. Eddie Maguire has this succession plan in place and in the 2012 season, Buckley takes over as head coach and Malthouse moves on to Carlton. They fell out over the incident. At the time, did you think this was the right thing for Collingwood to do? After Malthouse had just won a flag, were you happy with Buckley to come in and take over at Collingwood? Well, it was a tough one at the time because Nathan Buckley, um, you know, was well renowned of like as one of the, you know, one of the best players um, to play ever for Collingwood. And, you know, he was one of the stars of the game at the time. And a lot of other clubs were rumoured to um, pick him up and uh, get him into their program. And he was assistant coaches Collingwood at the time. And I think Collingwood really wanted to keep him at the club uh, because they so they saw so much in him. Um, it was a difficult decision, but to be honest, after you've just won a flag and then made a grand final. You've got to keep Mick Malthouse. I think we should have kept um, Mick Malthouse. It would have been better if we let Buckley go. It was probably the wrong decision. Mick Malthouse should have stayed on. Yeah, so we'll get to how Buckley sort of slipped down the ladder. And obviously, I forgot 2011 News did make the grand final. So yeah, after losing in a grand final to Geelong, Buckley takes over. I think what the, the planning was, was Maguire wanted to bring Buckley in at a time where Collingwood had were doing well so that, that he didn't have to rebuild as a as a first time coach so give him all of the firepower at his disposal and hopefully it works out for him but it didn't work out that way because ever since i think 2012 you slipped down the ladder uh 2011 you finished in first 2012 his first season you finished fourth 2013 you slipped to sixth and then after that you were out of the eight 2014 11 2015 12 2016 12 and 2017, you finished in 13th. Now, you guys lost big players uh, during that period. Dane Swan, Nick, Mac uh, Nick Maxwell was gone. Heath Shaw went to GWS. Um, there's probably a few that I'm forgetting. So that did probably leave a big hole in the side. Do you think it was probably, it had to be done, the rebuild? Or do you think you guys probably could have tilted for a flag? Uh, what, do you, what do you reckon? What was that time like? We had so much young talent was a thing, you know. We had, you know, the likes of um, Jamie Elliott just got drafted as a young player and he was possibly, from what we know now, he's probably had his best season in his earliest years, um, you know, winning that mark of the year. And we had so many of these, Jared Blair's another one, um, you know, who was looking very promising. We had all these young players who were coming through and um, the, the part of that succession plan was those young players to come through and continue the success of the club. Yeah, we did get get rid of a few key players. I know Didac was another one um, who went, who was so good um, for a very long time for the Pies. And we had all these veterans just all of a sudden go. And a lot of it was actually to do with Buckley. He cleared out a few players like he, Shaw and him, uh, yeah, weren't big fans of each other. Daisy eventually ended up leaving a little bit later on as well. You know, they could have continued that success forward. I think losing some of those players definitely hurt us a lot. Overall, I think, yeah, the rebuild um, probably wasn't necessary because we had so much young players coming through that were really, yeah, compl complimenting your old players. So in this time, you guys had, like, some good draft success when you were stinking it up. So you got Brody Grundy, uh, the goalie come in, Taylor Adams come in through a trade with uh, with Heath Shaw, obviously, uh, Darcy Moore, Maynard, and the goalie in that 2014 draft. So you did get some of the players that you look back now and you're like, fuck, we did all right there. So yeah, you picked up all these players who some of them have become all Australians along the way. So during these rebuilding years, who do you think like gelled really well under Buckley and who do you think developed the best during the rebuild? We've, we had some key players like Maynard's one player who um, sort of... In 2018, 2019, he's become a star for us. And I know he's got a very good um, relationship with Buckley and I've heard him speak about how Nathan Buckley's helped him to develop into the player that he is now. So even, you know, Darcy Moore, Buckley's probably used him 
in the wrong places. You know, they experimented with him up forward and that didn't quite work out. And he's found his spot now as a full-time um, key defender. You know, obviously was All-Australian um, last year in 2020. And yeah, Dugowie's a star as well. So the recruiting um, team and whatnot have done very well throughout that period. You know, Jack Crisp and Taylor Adams, to pick up those two, um, I think they're probably our two best players um, at the moment. In 2017, you finished 13th. 2018 comes around and you're up into third. The Pies are back, the prime time Pies. Dugowie had 48 that season. Brody Grundy was a was an absolute star that year. Side bottom, uh, Pendlebury Adams in that midfield. You guys probably had one of the best midfields, if not the best midfield in the comp that year. So when you went from 13th to third in the space of 12 months, did it start to feel like the chips were falling into place, like the rebuild? was starting to take effect and that Buckley was going to have a, a long reign at Collingwood for such a long time with all these good players. Yeah, it did. We, we seemed to sort of fill in some of those gaps that we, um, you know, had, had had in previous years, you know. We got rid of some of the old players, you know, Travis Cloak, we cleared him out um, of the side and it really opened up new opportunity for the likes of um, Mason Cox and then Brody Majek to come through and have um, fantastic seasons. You know, Brody Majek's another one who we basically got from nothing, developed and turned into, uh, yeah, a, a great player for us. And Mason Cox as well. It's something out of nothing. I think, I, I feel like it goes a little bit um, under the radar. Some of the work that the Collingwood Football Club and Nathan Buckley and Ned Guy and all of, all of those guys actually did to find those players and um, put him into the side. And then, you know, as you said, we, we had a fantastic midfield throughout that time as well. Probably thing that was a little bit shaky was our back line. We didn't have that key defender, yet we still thought Darcy Moore was going to be, you know, a, a key forward for us. And um, he was injured for the most of that season. And we we had Lyndon Dunn, who got injured and did the um, his ACL halfway through the season. And then we um, found Tyson Goldsack as a little bit of a replacement option for us as a defender. So all the pieces of the puzzle sort of came together in um, in between those two seasons. That's why I think there was such a big jump in the ladder. So the prelim comes around. You've got the reigning Richmond Tiger Premiers to face at the MCG. And I didn't think he's had a chance in this game, to be honest. I think he's went in as pretty comfortable underdogs. Mason Cox, one of those recruits you just talked about, lights up the MCG. You beat the Tigers and you're going into a grand final. How much confidence did you have going into the, the 2018 Grand Final that Buckley was going to walk away as a Premiership coach? The thing is, I sort of missed the whole build-up to it because I was in Fiji in a place where they had pretty much no Wi-Fi, um, no TV <laughs> for the whole week. Yeah. So I was just sort of just sitting there on the beach and like, I mean, it was an amazing like place where, where I went to in Fiji, but I, I couldn't enjoy the holiday because I was so nervous and stressed about the game coming up. It's not a, your normal routine going up to a grand final, like... <laughs> Go to Fiji on holiday. <laughs> yeah, Fiji. And well, the funny story is my um, family thought, you know, there's no chance of Collingwood um, making the grand final after the season we just had. So um, we booked a holiday to Fiji um you know, over the grand final. And, yeah, we ended up making it. And, um, yeah, it, it was a stressful build-up to the game. I was I was sort of confident, to be honest. I felt like, you know, it was our year. Like, after the fairy tale story with that um, prelim final and Mason Cox, you know, all the stories were falling into place um, perfectly. Um, and, they, yeah, I flew back um, the morning of the grand final. And, yeah... Everything sort of went wrong from there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're literally one kick away from winning the grand final. Buckley had a very close um, grand final as a player. Was it 2002? You just narrowly lost to the Lions? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So you narrow he narrowly lost there. And then that just Dom Sheed kick, one of the best moments in AFL history, just keeps the Pies away from a flag. In 2019, you lose a disappointing prelim to GWS. You just weren't there on that day. Next year, COVID year, 2020, you have a have a good win over here in Perth against West Coast, and then you just get absolutely pumped by Geelong. But up until that point, as an outsider, it didn't really seem like there was much going wrong at Collingwood. Was there any point after the 2018 Grand Final or maybe the GWS prelim where you thought, this probably won't work out long term, or was it just smooth sailing? To be honest, I was always I, was, I felt so good about the 2019 year. 
Um, you know, we, we, we set the tone early with um, Dugowie against that game against Richmond to back up our performance in the prelim final in 2018 and then to beat Richmond by, I think, around the same margin, about 40, 50 points in round two of that season. Um, and Dugowie kicked five goals. We're like, oh, I thought, you know, this is the year that we win the flag. Qualifying final... Um, against the Cats, which was a bit of a scrappy game. Um, the one distinct memory I have from that is Jamie Elliott doing that smother in like the last, final three minutes to sort of seal the game because Geelong were, to go, were probably going to go forward and kick a, a goal. And, you know, I just thought there was so, there's such a good culture in this team. I thought, you know what, after last year, there's going to be so much fire in the belly of the players. Like, they're going to want to win this. And, you know, I, I, I was a big fan of Buckley back then, um, to be honest. I thought he'd coached... Um, beautifully over the last two years. I remember going to that GWS game. It was a miserable day, raining, and then, you know, we never we never really looked on, and I think I think that was probably the point where everything started to fall apart. You know, you could see the game plan wasn't working, and we couldn't find a way to adapt it until um, the final quarter when Nathan Buckley finally said, all right, instead of doing little handballs and trying to work the way up the ground, um, adapt to the conditions and kick long, and that's sort of where, you know, I sensed maybe, like, you know, I had some doubt in the team. Like, you know, just the game plan there was just so stupid not to kick the ball long in the wet. And when we finally just surged the ball forward in the wet, you know, it became close. And what, that GWS only won by around five points in the end. Would you say it's been downhill ever since that, that prelim then? I think it has. In 2020, even um, start of the COVID season when, uh, yeah, we played the Western Bulldogs and we thumped them by around 50 50 points you know I, I still had a good feeling about us but um you know I think back then we were premiership favorites at the start of 2020 and then I don't know a, a game plan and game style just wasn't there in 2020 mm-hmm. yeah it was sort of a different it was a much different year and I think yeah it's probably that game against the Giants was the start of the uh the slope of the at the end. moment yeah exactly 2020 finishes you get absolutely embarrassed and outclassed by the cats but it's the covid season so who cares let's let's brush it aside you don't even get to start the 2021 season without adversity there's racial claims at the collingwood football club there's salary cap issues you're losing adam Trelaw and Jaden stevenson for a bloody a box of pringles so so you're not off to a good start going into the the 2021 20, season did it start to feel like something was up and maybe change was gonna happen or did it just feel like adversity and talk in the media but yeah i think it all started with that um systemic racism claim and whatnot and it just you know caused a lot of disruption within the club first game lost to the western bulldogs and then all of a sudden it just fell apart i don't know it's just something wasn't right with the game plan we were just sloppy you know and i think once you know the eddie thing and all that i think it was time for change and a lot of people were calling for change in the end it was it was probably the right call to clear some people out of the club and um yeah, freshen things up because nothing too good has happened um, since the 2018 Grand Final. I mean, good stuff has happened, but we're going down rather than up, which is, you know, not what you want. As you said, Eddie Maguire resigns, and he's always been someone who's backed Nathan Buckley balls to the wall. He's always gone head over heels for Buckley, obviously being the, the man behind the plan of Buckley succeeding Malthouse. He steps down, and then it's like, all right, well, there's your right-hand man gone, uh, Buckley get the job done doesn't really happen last week Nathan Buckley announces that he's going to resign from the Collingwood Football Club a Norm Smith medalist a rising star a Brownlow medalist seven time All-Australian Hall of Famer Collingwood team of the century Collingwood captain um, and obviously head coach of Collingwood steps away from Collingwood after 27 years of legacy he's built at the club what does it feel like for him to be gone after all of the work that he's put in to this to this club Oh, he's done so much for the Collingwood Football Club. Like half his life, he's been he's spent at the more than half of his life he's spent at the Collingwood Football Club, and he's given so much to it, and he's given so much, you know, happiness to the fans. And you know, a lot of people were calling for him, you know, out um, this so year and whatnot. Do you think it was the best for him to go now? Do you think it was time to, to freshen it up, like but with Buckley in particular? Oh, I think it was time, but I think. I almost think the, um, the club's almost being a little bit soft on it because they're not getting rid of the board and stuff. And I think the board and some of the other people need to go. Like, if you're going to do get rid of the coach, get rid of the president, you may as well get rid of, 
you know, a lot of other people who are making these decisions. You're only getting rid of two people who are key, but there's a lot more people who have contrib- contributed to the decisions that the club has made, you know, over the past few years. So he's a star of um, the game, Nathan Buckley, and he's he was a good coach. You know, he won the 2018 um, Coach of the Year um, award. So I think a lot of people actually appreciated, you know, when he was... Um, said he was stepping down um, how much he did for the club what do you think it means to Collingwood or to, to Barkley for him to never win a premiership directly I think he was on he was an assistant for the 20, 2010 one but to not win one as a player or a coach do you think that stinks a little bit a lot of people call it the Barkley curse like <laughs> it's, it's sort of funny you know he leaves 2010 we uh, win the grand final he, he comes back and then we go to dog poo and then um, we lose a grand final, which we should have probably won. So, yeah, it, it is a bit strange. Um, so, 218 games, he won 117, lost 99, had two draws, one grand final, two prelims, but no flags. Mitchy, yes or no, success or failure? Was Buckley's reign as Collingwood coach a success or a failure? This is a tough question. Given the position you were in before... Buckley took over. You were a premiership winning side. Now he's left you in the dirt. He's taken you through a rebuild. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's no cherry on top of the cake. It's a mud cake, but you you do want a cherry on the top. Success or failure? The easy thing to say is failure. And I, I, I sit on the fence. Like, some people are big Buckley fans, some people hate him, and I'm sitting right in the middle. It, it's so hard for me. I, I think it's a failure. He didn't get the ultimate goal to win a flag, and yeah, I think that probably overweight, the failure probably overweighs success a little bit. Do you see Collingwood winning a flag within the next five years? What this year's taught me is some of these young players coming through are so good, and you know, I think five years, you know, we should still be contending. I think we'll contend next year as well. You know, we've, we've got a sort of good mix of players like some of these young blokes coming through like McCreary, Poulter, Finlay McRae, Bianco um, and then you've got your sort of 22 year olds, your Quainers, your Dacosses. They're having huge impact at the moment. We've got a lot more of these young kids who have been talked about a lot and they'll come through as well. So yeah, I think I think, you know, the odds are with us to win one in the next five years, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. I don't think you guys are too far off the mark. From an outsider's perspective, I think it was definitely time for a shake-up. I think a lot of people from the outside wanted Buckley to fail as well. There's a lot of tall poppy syndrome in Australia, and the fact that Buckley has been such a successful person in Australian sports for him to take on such a big task and to fail... I think it almost makes some people happy in a in a pretty bad way. Yeah, uh, also the fact included. that he's a coach of Collingwood. Exactly. I think he's put you in good stead for the future as well. Hopefully, for your sake and for the for the Collingwood Army, I don't think you're too far off a flag. You guys have such a talented list. Uh, it's just about getting the right man for the job now, and um, I think you guys will be in good stead. But what a story, Nathan Buckley. That's going to do it, Mitchie. There you go. Was his reign successful? No. <laughs> so, yeah, there's the short answer. But no, nah, thank you for coming on, Mitchie. Obviously, Mitchie's a, an avid Collingwood fan, but an even better AFL YouTuber. So make sure you go check out the Mitchie Ryan channel. Absolutely killing it at the moment. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming on, Mitchie. No, nah, thanks for having me on, Drew. It was always a pleasure. And, yeah, it was good to have a chat about um, Bucks and his uh, reign as Collingwood coach. Beautiful. All right, we're going to go film a video on Mitchie's channel now. What is it about, Mitchie? Well, it is a Guess the AFL theme song challenge. Um, so, yeah. Feel free, once you've watched this and given a like, to come over and, yeah, give it a watch. Yes, thank you very much, Mitchie. Bit of fun. So, let's go do that. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. You plonkers.